number seven. Um, we are here to present Alba, the Thomas Slow Grain System. My name is Joseph Fernandez. My name is Luciano Felice. And I'm Lucia Smith. Here's the presentation outline. We'll give a brief description of what Alba do, along with the proposed design and the challenges we may face. I, we also include the, how we incorporated global learning. What is ALBA? ALBA is an autonomous following robot that has the ability of transporting small cargo that is relatively typical to what a human can carry. Basically, the user will have a, will have a small transmitter and the ALBA will have a, a receiver and this will be the communication between the user and the device. Our design consists of sensors. It will be an interchangeable cargo base. It will be capable of traveling different terrains. It will have a tank drive train, and it will be open source. The problem we find is that the loads are heavy that humans carry on typically, and a lot of time and energy is spent um, transporting these loads. Also, the autonomous robots today, they are designed for um, specialized tasks. So our motivation is to reduce, um, reduce the need for manual labor, optimize time and energy spent, and, and to make it multi-purpose oriented. We want to make it cost efficient by using selective material and making it the size, a uh, good size. And for global learning, we will have the product used by a wide range of people from handicapped to as simple as a person who plays golf. Um, we will be able to perform, the ALBA will be able to perform multiple tasks versus just one task. Um, it will be a multinational product. In terms of the user manual, it will be in different languages. And it will be environmentally friendly as no emission will be released into the environment. An autonomous system is often confused by an automatic system, whereas they're actually very different. An automatic system performs exactly as it is programmed, and an autonomous system has free will. It consists of a closed loop system with sensor feedback and is programmed to respond to its sensors. Um, these robots usually have three different types of wheels. Um, traction wheels, which provide high traction between two surfaces, and the other two, which are mechanical and omni wheels, have attached rollers to them, which facilitate its movement and rotation. These are the type of drivetrains commonly used on robots. We have the tank drive, which is the one we are actually incorporating into our design. But there are also other options that we consider, as well as the swerve drive, slide drive, harmonic drive, and mechanical drive. These are related standards, which we found that were needed to consider into our design. Yeah, these are the ISO standards. The next are the ANSI standards, as well as the ASTM standards, which mostly involve safety requirements as well as vocabulary standards. This is one of our uh, alternate design which we consider using. As you can see, is as a three-wheel drivetrain, which is not one of the previously shown drivetrains commonly used on robots. But we're, we're considering it anyways because after doing some research, we found most similar robots to our project consists of this three-wheel drivetrain, mainly because of the programming. It's easy to program, as well as portable and lightweight. But we found that it's not optimal for our design since we're trying to have um, high weight, and as well as being able to drive um, various terrains, which wouldn't be useful with wheels. So here's our proposed design, showing some of the main elements, such as the suspension, the tracks, uh, four motors, and the housing for the electronics here. The top shows uh, the cargo area we're hoping to make interchangeable. We have metric sizes, we have 12 millimeter holes as well as half inch holes. 
So typically, most people would be asking what the application of this robot would be. And generally, it can be applied to a lot of different fields. For example, a caddy, like a, a robotic caddy for a, a, golf, a golfer. It can carry his clubs, follow him. It can be used on farms to transport products or, or um, different crops back from the plant to the, to the home. Or maybe in airports where you need the luggage to be following you. So our proposed design is of a tank drivetrain. We found this to be the most efficient at delivering high torques. Um, our approximate dimensions are going to be about two feet by three feet long. The weight capacity we're hoping to achieve is 80 to 100 pounds on top of the robot. A conceptual design we started looking at first for the suspension was based off of this robot that is used in the military. Um, we liked it because the Idler wheels move a lot so it can stabilize the robot as it's traveling different terrain. So there's six main components we're focusing on when we're going to build this robot, such as the tank drive as we mentioned. Sensors, we're hoping to use ultrasonic, ultrasonic sensors. We're going to use two ultrasonic sensors in the front to receive an ultrasonic signal from the, the user who's going to have, carry a small device on them that will release ultrasonic waves. We chose to use brushed DC motors because they typically, based on our research, we found that they typically have the highest torque outputs and better uh, power requirements. Um, we are going to drive the entire system with a small development board using microcontrollers such as an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. We've seen a lot of prop open source projects that use this and we can actually incorporate that into our design and modify it a little bit so we can actually work with it. So in between the microcontroller and the actual motors, we have to have a motor controller to actually drive the, the motors. And we chose to use a battery, lead acid battery, because we want to bring down the center of gravity of the entire robot as low as possible so we can minimize tipping. And the lead acid battery has the heaviest and also has the largest capacity. The challenges we may be faced with include low cost, making it a simple design, making it user friendly, having a high power output, having the robot to travel on different terrains at a fast pace, also the ability of it to carry these heavy loads and making it open source. Here's our Gantt chart. We had a we have a course a total of eight and a half months roughly and we divided the different parts of the project over this time span. Here's a division of responsibilities. It's three team members total, and we equally distributed the workload. In conclusion, Abo will provide an alternate, alternative and more sufficient way of transporting loads. It will be designed to be versatile, so we'll be able to have different size geometries of loads on top of it and different weights. Um, it will provide diversity among its users, so we hope that it could be used in many, many different fields for different reasons and it could be adjusted using the open source technologies we're planning on using to further assist the user. And we're hoping to minimize the cost as much as possible. We're aiming for $500 to $1,000 to build the entire robot, which is kind of a long shot, but that's what we're hoping for. We, our future scope of work that we are planning on Achieving is to make it fully automated so that, for example, we can use it in a warehouse setting. It could divert, <coughs> traverse the, the actual warehouse and maybe take goods to a platform and not have to follow a user. <coughs> in, in this case, it would have to be receptive to the environment, so we'd have to use different sensors, multiple sensors to detect objects and avoid objects. We want to make it scalable so that <coughs> if you wanted to use it in a construction, set, construction setting with heavier loads, you can also increase the power outputs of different motors, change different motors onto it, make it more scalable, a little bit larger, heavier, and, and different materials. And like I said, we would use advanced, te advanced techniques such as multiple sensors to control it so that if we did use it in a warehouse setting, like I said, we'd have to use various sensors to detect objects and, and where it would need to go and where it need to place something or something like that. And we'll open the floor for any questions. I noticed yeah. you had the design for three wheels and the tank version, mm -hmm. and your scope of work said you were going to, by December, have the design complete. Mm -hmm. um, have you 
and that's tomorrow. Yeah. So, have you decided which whether you're going to have the tank or you're going to three wheel? Yeah. So the three wheel we were looking at, um, we didn't really like it because because it we wanted mainly for it to be able to stay stable on on really weird terrains that it would have to go over. So we, we ended up choosing the tank driver. This is actual our conceptual prototype that we want to build. So we're going to follow this as much as possible. Um, we're going to try to find the cheapest alternative for the tracks, because that's actually what we typically focus on when we started designing these that I found in my research that you have to focus mainly on the tracks first, because there's not a lot and they're very expensive. Good. Are you going to take this to a contest? Because I know there are robotic contests no. of <laughs> colleges compete against each other. Yeah, no, yeah. we're just building it just, just for our, our use. You can take the mulch off my car and get it out to my exactly. garden Let it without me car carrying. It's a good deal. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. So um, I, I look at your design, and is there anything in particular that you're trying to test that proves your concept? Yes, yeah, so we're hoping to test basically once we have a functioning prototype. We want to actually be able to travel different terrains. Nothing too crazy, but maybe over roots of a tree or something like that. And kind of do an analysis on what weight we can actually sustain using the power output of the motors and the capacity of the actual structure. Of the you're not specifically testing any of the applications that, that you listed, like golf caddy or... Um, no, no, we don't, we don't have okay. any specific one that we could, but we, we're hoping to aim for just for it to follow us through school, basically, and okay. just kind of be able to traverse different terrains carrying stuff on. Uh, the design that you currently have, what are the dimensions that you're thinking? So we're thinking, based on kind of like a medium size, we're thinking either like two foot by three foot, okay. and it's about, I think, nine inches tall in total. It's not too big, but we want to make it be able to fit through doors, basically. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Sure. First thing, Luciano, I loved your comment about autonomous, meaning that the robot has free will. Yes. I love that, because free will, will isn't something that a machine can produce. Um, talk to me about how this mechanism works for autonomous on this system. How, how are you going to make that work? Well, that's why we have the sensors and sensor feedback to the program will will change its its direction and its purpose. Um, it's not only going to be used to go, the program to go straight or right. It's going to our, our 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 hope is that by the end we have these these sensors incorporated in them where it could actually go around objects and certain um, terrains. So will it follow you, or is it going we'll to be you designed to follow you, or is yeah. it going to be designed to go around? It's, it's designed to follow you, but if there's an object in the way, we're hoping to incorporate sensors for it to be able to go around the object. Unless it's not going to be just directly as if I make a sharp turn and it's going to hit the wall. We want it to go around. How's it going to know to follow you, not follow me? So we're using the, as we are saying, the transmitter. We're going to try to use an ultrasonic transmitter because that's based on our research seems to be the best and communicate through just through that it can actually detect where you are and how far you are so we can change the software on that basically to say how fast the robot needs to go what direction it needs to, to follow. Okay. One other comment I wanted to make is in your design you're saying that it should be able to hold 80 to 100 pounds. Well, I, I suggest that you should make it to at least hold the weight of a person because if you put this thing in people's hands, you're going to step on it, and you're done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I actually have a comment. Um, you might want to look into, there's a UAV project going around where the UAV actually follows you based on a bracelet you're wearing. So um, uh, it's a, a quad rotor UAV. It's, I think, on crowdfunding. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a, I've seen a lot like that. There's a lot. That's why we're sticking to open source stuff because there's so much out there that it's easy to modify things that already exist to help us out with the actual design. Thank you. Could you go back to the slide with the challenges? Okay. So uh, you have some of these challenges. Uh, uh, can you uh, tell me how you uh, just maybe using a couple of, couple of those challenges? Mm -hmm. uh, probably low cost and the ability to carry heavy loads. Mm -hmm. uh, what what are, what are your plans as far as have been trying to overcome some of those challenges? Okay. So like <laughs> so low cost. Um, like I said, one of the most expensive things is actual tracks. So we're looking at 
whole new tracks that, that people have built online and things like that. And for example, we found using like bicycle um, chains and bicycle sprockets that they can build some pretty durable tracks. So we're hoping for something like that and that it's, you know, like I think like the tenth of the price of some of the tracks that we were looking at before. So it's going to help us overcome the, the price itself. The motors themselves are going to be kind of expensive because we know we want some high power output torque. And so that's going to be a big challenge to get cheap ones, you know, but, but we're going to try to overcome that just by research, finding the best alternative. Um, so the ability to carry heavy loads, we're going to have to do the math on actually figuring out what transmission system we need to incorporate into these motors and how much power output we should have based on the robot weight and the max weight that we just put on. So if we're going for 180 pounds here, we have to think of a lot larger motors. And that's why we chose four motors. We're still not 100% positive, positive. We need four driven motors. We might only need two or something like that. Any other questions? Thank you.